not by my will have troubled you, but since you make your pleasure of your pains, I will no longer chide you. I could not stay behind you. My desire, more sharp than filed steel, did spur me forth. And not all love to see you, though so much as might have drawn one to a longer voyage, but jealousy of what might befall your travel, being skillless in these parts, you know, which to a stranger, unguided and unfriended, oft prove rough and unhospitable. My willing love, the rather of these arguments of fear, set forth in your pursuit. My kind Antonio, I can no other answer make but thanks. What's to do? Shall we see the relics of this town? <laughs> Tomorrow, sir, best fit to find your lodging. I am not weary, and tis long tonight. I pray you, let us satisfy our eyes with the memorials and things of fame that do renown this city. Uh, would you pardon me? I do not without danger walk these streets. Uh, once in a sea fight against the Count of Galleys, I did some service of such note indeed that were I taken here, it would be scarce be answered. Be like you, slew a great number of his people. Well, the offense is not of such bloody nature. It might have been answered in repaying what we took from them, which for traffic's sake, most of our city did. Only myself stood out, for which if I be lapsed in this place, I shall pay dearly. Do not then walk too open. It doth not fit me. Hold, sir. Here's my purse. Uh, in the south suburbs of the elephant is best to lodge. I will bespeak our diet whilst you beguile the time, feed your knowledge with the view of the town. There you shall have me. Why I your purse? Well, happily you shall light upon some toy you have desired to purchase. And your store, I think, is not for idle market, sir. I'll be your purse bearer and leave you for an hour to the elephant. I do remember. I have sent after him. He says he'll come. How shall I feast him? What bestow of him? For youth is bought more oft than begged or borrowed. If I speak too loud. Where is Malvolio? He is sad and civil and suits well for his servants with my fortunes. Where is Malvolio? He's coming, madam, but in a very strange manner. He is sure possessed, madam. Why, what's the matter? Does he rave? No, madam, he does nothing but smile. Your ladyship were best to have some guard about you if he come. For sure, the man is tainted in his wits. Go call him hither. I am as mad as he, if sad and merry madness equal be. Sweet lady. Oh, oh. Smilest thou? I sent for thee upon a sad occasion. Sad lady? I, I could be sad. This does make some obstruction, this uh, cross guarding, but what of it? If it pleases one eye, it is with me as true as sonnet is. Please one. Please all. Why, how dost thou, man? What is the matter with thee? Uh, not black in mind, though yellow in legs. <laughs> it did come to his hands, and commands shall be executed. I think we do know the sweet Roman hen. Oh, wilt thou go to bed, Malvolio? To bed, I, sweetheart, I'll come to thee. God, comfort thee! Why dost thou smile and kiss thy hand so oft? How do you, Malvolio? At your request, yes, nightingales answer dogs. Why appear you with this ridiculous boldness before my lady? Be not afraid of greatness. Twas well writ. What meanest thou, Malvolio? <laughs> Some are born great, some achieve greatness, 
What sayest thou? And some have greatness thrust upon them. Heaven restore thee! Remember who commended thy yellow stocking? Thy yellow stocking? And wish to see thee cross guarded. <laughs> cross guarded? Go to, thou art made, if thou desirest it to be so. Am I made? If not, let me see thee a steward still. Why, this is very midsummer madness. Madam, uh, the young gentleman of Count Orsino's return, I could hardly entreat him back. He attends your ladyship's pleasure. <laughs> oh, I'll come to him. Good Mariah, let this fellow be looked to. Oh, where's my cousin Toby? Oh, let some of my people have a special care of him. I would not have him miscarry for the half of my dowry. Oh, ho! do you come near me now? No worse man than Sir Toby to look to me. This concurs directly with the letter. She sent him on purpose that I may appear stubborn to him, for she incites me to that letter, be opposite with the kinsmen, surly with servants. I have limed her. It is Jove's doing, and to Jove I am thankful. And when she went away now, let this fellow be looked to. Fellow, not Malvolio, nor after my degree, but fellow. Why, everything adheres together. There's no drama, scruple, no scruple, scruple, no obstacle, no uh, incredulous or unsafe circumstance. <laughs> what can be said? Nothing that can come between me and the full prospects of my hope. Well, Joe, not I is to be the doer of this, and he is to be thanked. Which way is he? In the name of sanctity, if all the devils of hell be drawn in one, and devil legion himself possess him, well, I'll speak to him. Here he is. Here he is. How is it with you, sir? How is it with you, man? Go off. I discard you. Let me enjoy my private go off. Lo, how hollow the fiend speaks within him. Did not I tell you? Sir Toby, my lady prays you to have a care of him. Ah, uh -huh. does she so? Go to, go to. Peace, peace. We must be gentle with him. Let me alone with him. How do you, Malvolio? What is it with you, man? Oh, defy the devil. Consider he's an enemy to mankind. Do you know what you say? La, you, and you speak ill of the devil, how he takes it at heart. Pray God he be not bewitched. Carry his water to the wise woman. Mary, it shall be done tomorrow morning as I live. My lady would not lose him for more than I'll say. How oh, now, mistress? Oh, Lord. Prithee, hold thy peace. This is not the way. Do you not see the way that you move him? Let me alone with him. No way but gentleness. Gently, gently. The fiend is rough and will not be roughly used. Why? How now, my barcock? How dost thou? Chuck. Sir, I bid ye come with me. What man? Tis not for gravity to play a cherry pit with Satan. Hang him, foul collier! Get him to say his prayers, Sir Toby. Get him to pray. My prayers, Minx. No, I warrant you, he will not hear of godliness. Go hang yourselves, all. You are idle, shallow things. I am not of your element. You shall know more hereafter. <laughs> Why is it possible? <laughs> if this 
were played upon a stage now. I could condemn it as an improbable fiction. His very genius hath given him the infection of the device, man! <laughs> Nay, pursue him now, lest the device take air and taint. Why, we shall make him mad indeed. <laughs> Come, we'll have him in a dark room and bound. <laughs> My niece is already of the belief that he's mad. We may carry it thus for our pleasure and his penance till our very pastime, tired, out of breath, prompt us to have mercy on him at which we will bring the device to the bar and crown thee for a finder of madmen. <laughs> but see, but see. <laughs> More matter for a May morning. Here's the challenge. Read it. Warrant you, there's vinegar and pepper in it. Is it so saucy? Aye, is it. I warrant him. Do but read. Give me. Youth, whatsoever thou art, thou art but a scurvy fellow. Good and valiant. Wonder not, nor admire not in thy mind. Why do I call thee so? For I will show thee no reason for it. A good note uh, that keeps you from the blow of the law. Thou comest to the Lady Olivia, and in my sight she uses thee kindly, uh, but thou liest in thy throat. Thou is not the matter I challenge thee for. Very brief and to exceeding good sense less. I will waylay thee going home, where if it be thy chance to kill me. Good. Thou killest me like a rogue and a villain. Still you keep on the windy side of the law. Good. Fare thee well. And God have mercy upon one of our souls. He have mercy on mine, but my hope is better. And so look to thyself. Thy friend, as thou usest him, and thy sworn enemy, Andrew Aguecheek. If this letter cannot move him, his legs cannot. I'll give it him. You may have a very fit occasion for it. He is now in some commerce with my lady and will by and by depart. Go, Sir Andrew, scout me for him at the corner of the orchard. So soon as ever thou seest him, draw. And as thou drawest, swear horrible. Uh, for it comes to pass oft that a terrible oath gives manhood more approbation than ever proof itself would have earned him. Away! <sighs> Nay, let me alone for swearing. Now, I will not deliver this letter. For the behavior of the young gentleman gives him to be good enough capacity and breeding. His employment between his lord and my niece confirms no less. Therefore, this letter, being so excellently ignorant, will breed no terror in the youth. He will find it comes from a clodpole. But, sir, I will deliver his challenge by word of mouth. Set Aguecheek upon a notable report of valor, and drive the gentleman, as I know the youth will aptly receive it, into a most hideous opinion of rage, skill, fury, and impetuosity. Oh, this will frighten them both that they will kill one another by the look, <laughs> like cockatrices. <laughs> Here he comes with your niece. Give them way till he take leave, and presently... After him. Oh, I will meditate the while some horrid challenge for him. 